a lot of questions from people asking about cats and plants. Do my cats eat my plants? Am I aware of the fact that I have a lot of poisonous plants in my home around my cats? How do I prevent my cats from eating my plants? How do they prevent their cats from eating their plants? Etc. So today I'm going to talk about cats and plants. If you're anything like me and you walk the fine line between being a crazy plant lady and being a crazy cat lady, then you know well the woes of worrying that your cats might eat your plants and that it could harm them. If you are a plant collector and you have cats, it is really important to know which plants are toxic to cats and to train your cats to not eat your plants like I have. If you are concerned that a plant might be toxic to your cats before you buy it or before you bring it home from the garden center, the ASPCA website has a very comprehensive list of many houseplants. So you can quickly look it up on the ASPCA website, which I'll link down below. It's a comprehensive list, but it doesn't have every plant on earth. Do my cats eat my plants? No, they don't. And it's because I trained them not to. And I'll talk about that a little bit later and the method that I used. But for example, one of the first plants that I brought home was a parlor palm, which is not toxic to cats. I had it within reach of my cat, Ted, who is a very obstinate and hungry Siamese, and he just ate it to bits. And so I had to find a way to stop him from eating my parlor palm so that I could eventually move on to the hard stuff like really rare begonias. <laughs> So let's talk about the different ways that you can prevent your cats from getting into your plants. I know there are two main problems. One of them is that the cats are eating the plants, chewing on the leaves, things like that. The second problem is that some cats like to dig in the soil of potted plants or do a little number one or two. Ooh. So I wanna talk about the different methods that people often use to prevent cats from doing those naughty, naughty things. Let's get into it. I just wanna say right off the bat, do not use cayenne pepper or chili powder to deter your cats from getting into your plants. I see this suggested on the internet everywhere, in forums, I heard it as a little girl growing up. Do not do that, and I will tell you why. I have seen some horrific imagery of kitty cats that got cayenne pepper on their paws, and then while cleaning themselves or something like that, they got cayenne pepper or chili powder in their eyes. And what cats will do is anything to get it out of their eyes. And so I've seen pictures of cats that literally dug their own eyes out. And I'm really sorry to put that imagery in your head, but I can't emphasize it enough. Don't use that method. It's quite cruel and you can pay through the nose and vet bills when it happens. Now that we got that out of the way, I will tell you some other methods that you can use that won't harm your cats and that I won't get after you for. Some people use citrus peels like lemon peels, orange peels, lime peels, and they will put those in the soil around the plant. They do it in the garden, for example, or in their potted plants as well. And the smell of citrus is just awful for cats. They don't like it. It's too strong. And if you, you know, cut a lemon and show it to your cat, it'll probably be like, oh God, get it out of my face. But I find that with this method, the potency of the citrus wears off within like a day. The peels begin to dry out and then the scent goes away and the cat doesn't really care at all. You can get an essential oil like citrus or spearmint or peppermint, something that cats really detest the smell of. Obviously not cat mint. You don't want to put catnip on your plants. Your cat's going to be like, woohoo, it's a party. <laughs> Dilute it with water and spritz that on the soil of your potted plant once or twice a day. The thing is, just like the citrus peels, it'll wear off pretty quickly. So you have to be on that all the time. You can try to compromise with your cat and get him his own plant. Like at any pet store or large supermarket that sells animal stuff, you can often find a container of cat grass or it's like wheat grass that's non-toxic to cats that they love. My cat loved it, but the problem is that he kind of saw that as like a gateway drug. My cat's not really a compromiser. And also you, you can't really have a conversation with your cat and say, this is your plant and these are my plants because it's a cat. Or you can try the old unpleasant atmosphere situation and put something around your plants that your cats don't really like to be around so they won't want to go near the plant. For example, when people are trying to train their cats to not go on their kitchen countertops, they might put aluminum foil on the countertops when they're not home or at night when they're in bed because cats don't really like the sound of the aluminum foil when they're walking on it. So they'll jump up on the countertop and then be kind of startled oh by the sound of the aluminum foil and then they will associate that negative feeling of being startled with being on the countertops. I tried this with my kitten. I would put tape on the countertops, sticky side up when I went to bed because I knew that my cat was getting up on the countertops when I was in bed and I didn't want her to. And then she would get, you know, little tape boots on her feet and she didn't like that. So she stopped going on the countertops for a little while. But once I took the tape out of the equation, I know she's getting on my countertops at night. I see her paw prints all over my stovetop. I'm not stupid. So whether or not the cat will continue to stay away from the plants after you take the unpleasant element out of the situation depends on the cat. 
It didn't work on my cats. Or if you have a cat that likes to dig around in the dirt of your plants, then you could try putting some pebbles or stones on top of the soil of your plant. Keep the plant in mind though, like if it's a plant that's in direct sun for hours every day, those stones might absorb the heat of the sun and it could damage the plant. So keep your plant in mind too. But since cats are really just wanting to dig around in that dirt, it might deter them because the stones are off-putting and it's not what they're looking for. They're looking for that dirt. Or if you have a cat like mine, you'll end up waking up at three in the morning to the sound of your cat batting a pebble around the living room. Also check the litter box. Make sure that your litter box is always clean because who wants to go to the bathroom in a pee box? Nobody. And again, this was another method that just didn't work for me, but I will tell you what did work for me in two weeks and my cats have not eaten my plants in three years. A spitzer bottle. And just cool your jets, because I don't mean using a spritzer bottle as a form of punishment on your cat. I found that there are two things that my cats respond to. One, creating a negative association with the activity that I don't want them to partake in. But if you're going to do that, you should also be following that up with positive reinforcement and redirection. For example, when my cat was scratching my sofa, I bought cat scratch pads, and then when the cat scratched the couch, I say, no, 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 clap, clap, clap give the cat a start, stop him from the behavior that he's doing, and then redirect him to the scratch pad and get him to scratch that, and then give him a little treat and say, oh, thank you so much, that's a good boy, thank you so much for you scratch that scratch. And then the cat is gonna stop scratching the couch because he has a negative association with that, and he's gonna scratch the scratch pad because he has a positive association with that. And my cats haven't scratched my furniture in years. I'm not talking about spraying your cat in the eyes or walking up to your cat and spraying him as a form of punishment. What I mean is, you know, I'd be on the couch, my plants are all the way on the other side of the room, I have a little spritzer bottle next to me, if I saw the cat go to the plant and start, you know, rubbing up against it or chewing on it or something, I would give him a little but not at the cat, at the wall behind the cat or at the floor near the cat or, at, you know, at a nearby plant because the sound and the splash of the water is going to give the cat a start. And so the cat will begin to develop that negative association of like, oh, when I chew on this plant, I get startled. And then follow it up with positive reinforcement. If you have cat grass, for example, redirect the cat to the cat grass instead. And the nice thing about that was that I wasn't shouting at my cats, I wasn't clapping my hands or chasing them or something like that, which made them fear me. They didn't know where the jet of water was coming from. They just knew that something startling happened when they were chewing on that plant. So those are a few methods that you can try to keep your cats from eating your plants. And that is the method that worked for me personally. If you don't support that, don't use it. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something, that you can train your cats to not touch your house plants like I did. And if you have any other suggestions, feel free to leave it down below. I'm sure that everybody wants to hear more suggestions. If you have any questions for me, feel free to ask. If you like this video and you want to see other houseplant related content, you can check out my channel. Feel free to subscribe, hit the little notification bell. And if you want to support me in any way, you'll find my Patreon page link down below as well. So thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much to my $10 patrons, Rachel Brazy, Lauren Yagold, my $5 patrons, Kayla Mann, Ashley Young, Aaron Meow, Krista Laughlin, and Elizabeth Murray, my $3 patron, Brooke McKinney, my $2 patrons, Awkwardly, Abby, Paige Williams, We Scared Away, Hannah Gookler, Adam B, Martha Childress, Janine Kaburian, Deborah, Renee Allen, Abigail Colon, Georgia Thomas, and yeah, I've killed that. One dollar patrons, Denise Grimm, Claire Lynn, Aria Pukainen, Meg, Claire Buck, Megan McConville, Kristen Bjordel, Max Hyder, what you hiding from, buddy? Linda Thea, Ivy Dubois, Miles Robson, Melissa Monstero, Leslie M, Amy, Eliza Matthews. Yada, Elisa maybe, and Lexi Haynes. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you in the next one.